and welcome to Goldbridge Saves Football. What a weekend we've had. Premier League title drama, potentially a new favourite, also relegation battles and controversy as some prats in the media completely melt down on TV. What's going on, Will? We've got lots of either ors and I've tell you what, got some very interesting things to say around some of those as well. I've got a bit of a headache. I've had a bit of a cold, so I'm feeling grumpy. Yeah, Grumpy Bridge, but also Birthday Bridge as well. Over the weekend, yes. Yes, it's your birthday weekend. It's 32 th again. Yes, how does it feel to be a, a young man? Uh, you get to a certain age in life and birthdays really are just another day. Okay, well, let's be a bit more positive. A bit like being a Man United fan. Yeah, exactly. Just big smile on your face. You're, you're a lovely young man and we're going to have a great podcast, aren't we? We're going to have a great podcast as well. And I really want to delve into a few things as well. I mean, we, I feel, I'm almost in a weird mood. Maybe it is the the, the, the LEMSIP, but, yeah. uh, you know, I feel like defending certain Liverpool players. I feel like defending certain Man City players wow. uh, in what I describe as bad takes. Right. Which, Goldbridge's bad takes yeah. might be a new section of the podcast. Well, let's just have a look at the contents on that LEMSIP as well, because you have come in a little bit lightheaded. Maybe you're all over the place and who knows what you're going to say. So strap yourselves in because this could be the best or the worst podcast we've ever done. Yeah, well, it was. Uh, thanks everyone who's supporting the podcast, by the way. Don't forget, get your comments in, keep sharing it, keep telling people all about it, because this is how we grow. Unfortunately, we don't have the budget to be on all of the billboards in the championship, like certain other podcasts. Yeah. Uh, although their host made a prat of themselves this week, we'll be talking about Neville a little bit later. A um, little bit distinctive there, descriptive, but who cares? Uh, let's talk about the weekend. Um, the Premier League, well, talk about the weekend, actually. We'll talk about my book in a little bit, but if you're watching visually, you will see Goldbridge's book, which you can pre-order now. We'll drop the link in the video description. Available from all book, good bookshops. It's doing really well. It's in the top 100 wow. movers and shakers on Amazon at the moment. It's, it's, it's going to tell you what, if you see that in Tesco and Sainsbury's, that's going to really upset some of the mainstream media producers when they see that when they're buying their posh little sushi. Yeah, I, I, nothing wrong with sushi, Mark. It's a great uh, little lunch treat. And also, uh, me and Noel are very excited. of seeing there's a big chapter on the podcast, is there? Let, let's get onto the show because we've got lots to talk about. We're going to talk about the title race. You've had Liverpool as title favourites. Yes, because I'm not a flip-flopper. Are you going to stick with that? I'm sticking with Liverpool. I was thinking of this coming into the studio today and I think you can't be moving and shaking at this time of the season because what's the point of putting a prediction in? I put my cards down and I said, Jurgen Klopp, I'll follow you to the end of the season and beyond. And I stick... Like, people are writing off Liverpool as title favourites. They are top of the league. Mm. Apart from being well, on goal not, difference, yeah, they're, they're joint so, top. So they're not top yeah, of the league. They're joint top of the league at the moment. And I think there's going to be so many twists and turns going into this run in. You can't predict it. The worst thing is, we'll get onto it. City are imperious, aren't they? I think it's 25 unbeaten. It's coming in March, April. There's a train coming, and I don't think it's going to stop. I'm still going to stick with Man City. Yeah. You know why? Because I think that. Again, we'll, we'll talk about some of the officiating and uh, big shout out Wolves. We are here to save football and we'll try and save, wo save Wolves. But uh, Crystal Palace were robbed of a penalty at the weekend. And I just think that as much as I don't really want to go into that, because I think we've seen so many dodgy penalty decisions over the last few days. Yeah. What it, The overarching thing for me is that Man City in this period... They just, I wouldn't be surprised if they won every single game. They know how to get the job done. You look at De Bruyne, who was fantastic. I know you want to do a bit of an either or with De Bruyne, which could break the internet. Yeah, instead of you. But um, no, it's, um, I think Man City are in that sort of groove where they've had a lot of things go their way. You've got to take that into account. But they also know what they're doing. Yeah. And I thought Arsenal were absolutely brilliant on Saturday night against Brighton. I mean, they should have been 2 0 up before the penalty. Do you think that was a penalty, by the way? Just very, very quickly. I know everyone's spoken about Which it. Which one, sorry? The Jesus penalty, Brighton. Uh, yeah, no, I did think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 do you know what? There's a couple this weekend where I'll absolutely slaughter VAR. Yeah. But there's actually a couple where I thought they got it absolutely spot on. And when I saw Lamptey get a bit of the ball, I thought, no, it's not a penalty. But yes. then I thought, but he deprives Jesus of going past him yeah. with the follow through. So I thought it was a penalty, but they should have been 2-0 up by then. I thought Arsenal were really, really good. Obviously, Liverpool have dropped the points, but no, I'm not going to change my mind. I'm going to stick with Man City because I still think Arsenal have got a lot of games to go yeah. and they've got the harder run in. They've got to go to Spurs. They've got Villa next week at home. They've got Chelsea at home. They've got to go to Wolves away. They've got to go Man United away. Bayern and, Munich away. Yeah, they've got that. Potential semi-finals. They're the best team since Christmas, Arsenal, and I do want them to win it but I wouldn't call them favourites because I, I just think logically they're the best team at the moment, yeah. but 
you, you've got to look at the title run here. Well, a lot of people are doing comparisons to last season and there was a graph on the BBC which basically showed the months of the season and obviously, you know... when they're I love in, it when it moves Yeah, like they're that. intercepting Whee! like that and it just showed the end of the season and Man City were just up to the top of the graph and, and Arsenal nearly fell off it. But you'd like to think with what we were speaking to the Don about last week that those additions, the length of time that Arteta has been in there and just the overall learnings from last year that they, they will sort of prevail yeah and look get in the comments with who you think the title favourites are because I think what we've got here is three teams who in different ways deserve to win the league yeah. um, Arsenal I'd love them to win it and I'd love them to win it because they haven't won it for years and Liverpool and Man City have won it and obviously as a United fan they're big rivals but I'd love Arsenal to win it I think they've been the best team since Christmas that's playing so well but I can't ignore the running is really difficult. And I don't think they need the pressure of that favouritism. So I will stay staying with Manchester City. Yeah. Okay. You have changed a few times. So when you say staying with Manchester City, you've not well, always we, stayed we, with well, Manchester City. Well, we talk about it every week because that's yeah. the whole point. And I'm just saying I've stayed with Liverpool. We should have our own graph. of. Yeah. Well, mine would be straight and yours would be up and down all over the place. Um, what I was going to say, Jurgen Klopp's comments after the game is he was saying that if this uh, Arsenal side faced the same Man United side as they did yesterday, Arsenal mm. would win, which I thought was a bit strange. feels a bit like deflecticism. Is that it, a word? It's, uh, it's, it's mental it's mind psych- games. It's psychological warfare. Yeah. He's, he's, Do he's, you believe he's, he's throwing verbal bombs. Um, I think I like Jurgen Klopp. And I, the reason I prefer Klopp to Pep is I think when, when, when the facade drops with Pep, he becomes like a spoiled little crying baby. Whereas with Klopp, the facade does drop a lot. Klopp and, reminds me a lot of you, actually. Yeah. When Man thanks. United no, when Man United lose, it's like I'd say you're more similar to Klopp than you are to Pep. Yeah, yeah. Where you'll be quite emotional. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Pep's quite a bit of a stone faced killer, isn't he? And I think that's why people like Klopp because yeah. you know he is genuine. And I think what he's what's happened. I mean, I, I was stunned about that game because obviously we knocked them out of the FA. Cup. And, and amazingly, Man United have not lost to Liverpool this year. We've knocked them out of the cup, and we've drawn with them twice. That's blown my mind. It has. It's amazing. It's absolutely true as well. We we parked the bus at Anfield. We got a nil-nil. Yeah. Not about the cup, and then we got a draw yesterday. And that, I think that. And that's the real title. And that that and that's the real quiz. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And I think that Klopp will be fuming about that. And I think after the game yesterday, I I I predicted that United would lose that game, and I never really predict United will lose. But you said a draw on here. Did I? Yeah. Oh, well done. I'll take that. Congratulations. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I, I flip-flop, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, I think I, I did the United stand show on the morning of the match and I said, I think we'll lose because of the injuries and everything and Liverpool are so good. But the big reason was I watched the cup game and Liverpool should have won. Yeah, yeah. And I thought they won't come again and make the same mistake. And they did. Yeah. They had all those opportunities. I mean, the amount of times they were like five against three and they didn't work it for the one-on-one. So they had all those shots, but there wasn't really any chance that I thought, Apart from Diaz at the end, I thought, oh, that's a miss, uh, a sitter. So I think Klopp at the end of the game is just sat there going, how the bloody hell have we not won again? And therefore he's gone, well, Arsenal uh, Arsenal will win. They, because he's annoyed that they didn't win. So he's, you know, Well, you know what they were really missing yesterday? Erling striker. Haaland. If Erling Haaland was playing yesterday, he would have won the game for Liverpool. And you said he'd get nowhere near that team. But that's a one-off. Yeah, but one off, uh, three points could change. I'll tell you what, if Rasmus Hoyland had been up front for Liverpool yesterday, yeah. I think he'd have won in the game as well. Well, I mean, a lot of people jumping on him. There's yeah. no service for him. Uh, is there comparisons there for when, you know, Haaland's going for those dry spells as well? Well, I said this last week. Look, I think Roy Keane said about uh, Haaland being a League Two defender. And I sort of agreed. He's not a League Two defender, by the way, but a, a, attacker. Um, but well, when was, it came to his link up play, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I don't. This is why I wouldn't put Haaland in a Liverpool team because I don't think he's got the work rate to run the channels and the link-up play. But you're right about yesterday. If he'd played yesterday, he probably would have scored a hat-trick because he's a brilliant penalty box striker. Um, but when you're talking about why Haaland was quiet against Arsenal and why he's been quiet in Champions League finals, if he gets nil service, he'll get nil points yeah, in nice. relation to goals. And Is that a Norwegian accent? Norway, yes. I don't know. I don't know. Um but Rasmus is the same and, and I find it, I and mean, we've got a brilliant either or which sort of feeds into this. I find criticism that's not educated, boring and irritating. And I think that there were a few people yesterday getting in on, on Rasmus. And I, you know, he's below average, but Haaland was below average last week. He's still the best penalty box striker in the world. And Rasmus is still a really good striker. He's had one shot in three games since the international break. Bloody hell. 
how can he be seven or eight out of ten yeah. if you don't get service? So, but people, wow, he's got to make the runs. Man, you know, it doesn't matter where he runs. He could have the runs someone wouldn't wipe up for him. He's got to deal with it on him own. He's, he's, you know, he may as well have the runs because he's dealing in shit. It's absolutely <laughs> terrible. So I think that we need to do better. I need to do better. Everybody needs to do better in relation to their anal- analysis, I need to do an- analytical side of football. You can give... Haaland a poor four out of ten against Arsenal. You can give Hoyland one against Liverpool, but there are mitigating circumstances for a striker. They are so reliant on service. Unless you are prime Ronaldo or Messi, where you can pick the ball up on the halfway line, go past four or five players and put it in the bottom corner. That's not Haaland. That's not Hoyland. It's not Gary Lineker. It's not Ian Wright. You know, these players. Yeah, these players need service. And yeah, I agree with you yesterday. I think if you put Haaland or Hoyland up front for Liverpool, they'd have had a uh, they'd have had a lovely day. Lovely, so I'm right then. Fantastic. Only on that specific game. Well, but Jamie Carragher said Liverpool missed uh, Diogo Jota. He said he would have won the game for him yesterday if he was playing. But you know what? I think that, I mean, this is weird from a Manchester United fan point of view because I think it was a penalty. I've said it before. Yeah. Uh, I but, just don't understand why you lunge in in that scenario at that time and you just make the referee make a decision. Well, it goes to sip water and puts it down. This yes. is going to make a good point now. But it's again, it's bad It's bad analysis of a game because they're watching it and going, well, his foot doesn't touch thingy. And and what people don't realise is you're watching it. You, you fell into the slow motion thing, haven't yeah. you? Because what happens is he misses it with his front foot, but then he's in a scissor situation where his follow through is going straight into Harvey Elliott. So there is impact. And when you watch it in full real time, it's quite strong impact. Yeah. Of course, Harvey Elliott, he probably thinks it's Christmas. He's like... He's missed well, a little the, juicy dangler yeah, out he's for like, him. He's, he's, he's missed the ball and yeah. he's coming at me. Here we go. Take a tumble. So I thought that was a penalty. But then, I, you know, I watch and listen to some Liverpool stuff on like Twitter and stuff and they're going in on Nunez and they're going in on Salah. I can't and believe I'm like, the Salah and I'm like, criticism. And I'm like, we've, we've said this before. Yeah. How a Liverpool fan can criticise Mo Salah? And I've seen it before. I've seen video clips of it as well. And I'm like, you're an idiot. You're an absolute idiot. It's 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 a title race at Old Trafford in a big game and they've made some bad decisions, they've made some bad choices, but you are joint top of the league. No one really predicted that. He's still, for me, the best player in the Premier League and one of the best players in the world. And they have bad days. They had a bad day. They take him on down. He's absolutely imperious as well. And and like you have to put him up in that category and that's why he should have more money in the bank because he's got those sort of that legacy which you know right he's going to come good it's not like a sort of lower down the table striker where you get he's had like fits and starts and he's had that form Mo Salah has consistently been at the top level and it might slightly just decline because of his age but I don't I don't think so and Liverpool would not be in this position if it wasn't for him and many other players but he's the main catalyst for that yeah and I think with um with with Liverpool, I think there probably was a bit of frustration because it was Man United and they felt they were going to win. And also they had that buffer, didn't they, of three points yeah. on Man City, which is gone. And you want to keep hold of that for as long as possible. Because I think they always knew they had a loss or a draw they could afford. Yes, um, but you don't want it but, early on. But, but you don't want it early on. So I think that that's the problem. I think there's a bit of frustration with Liverpool. And, and, and I certainly think that that came out from Jurgen Klopp as well. Um, I think Arsenal were the big winners of the weekend. But... Man City won as well and I think that they could win every single game. Well, according to this, Manchester City, according to Opta, are now the favourites with just under 40%. Then it goes to Liverpool and then it goes to Arsenal with a third in that favourites race. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Would at the you moment. agree with that? I would agree with that at the moment. Although I think Liverpool have got some difficult away games. Liverpool away games, they've got Fulham away, Everton away, West Ham away and Aston Villa away. Villa away is the tough one. The Everton other- in a derby just to be shit houses. I think Liverpool's big problem, and I think any Liverpool fan will go, Goldbridge has made a good take here, is when you look at Sheffield United on Thursday, they won it 2-1 with a goal from McAllister. Yeah. They're not putting the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, yeah. And that, it, they're good enough to win every single game, but they're not putting the ball in the back of the net. And that could change overnight. I mean, I don't know when Trent's back. Should be back soon, because there were yeah. rumours he's supposed to be back for United. Alisson's still out, yeah. which, you know, is still an absolute... Not yeah. just going at the back, it's going forward as no, well. No, they're, they're, they're both leaders for that team as well. But yeah, I'd still say City for me. And I think that um, it's the twist in terms of a title race. Yeah, and that's why we love it, Mark. And yeah. um, one thing that you didn't love at the weekend, we are going to get on to Pratt of the Week, but Gary Neville. Yeah. Um, you two famously get on, been on holiday together, love each other's company. I think he's at your birthday meal later on. But 
the um, well, he's he's, he's a, a forward, uh, not a, not a forward by Gary Neville. The audio actually is read by Gary Neville. He's yes. such a big fan, so no, no, that's no. that's a special edition. It's not out yet. When it, I the, invented, that was more like Watto actually. Um, yeah. But he was basically you. You didn't like the coverage. Uh, he also said about the injuries not being a well, not a factor. What did he say? What got you riled he, up? He said something. Look, I was doing my watch along on the United Stand, and uh, obviously I read the live chat, and uh, like we read your comments as well. So get them in. And he said, uh, somebody in the chat said, I can't believe what Neville's just said. So I, you know, sometimes people try and banter you. So I was like, I'm not going to react. So I went online and had a look, and I found the clip. And he basically said before the game, and apparently after the game as well, I'm not having it that injuries are a reason for Manchester United's bad season. And I was like, I'm sorry. You might, and and I think Neville's ten hog out. He just won't say it because he's with, only with, back in with so well with Solskjaer. It didn't matter how much we get beat. I, I refuse. I don't care whether I'm paid by Sky. He's my mate. I quite like that, though. and I won't do. Well, that's fine. But then with ten hog, he's like I think unfairly against him and has been from day one. But I'd rather he said this ain't the manager for Man United on Sky than in front of millions of people say. I'm not having injuries as an excuse because I know lots of people who are Ten Hag out who will go, no, we the injuries have been ridiculous. We've had over 60. Even McT- McTominay was out yesterday. We've got no left back. We've got no centre back. That young lad playing centre back. Yeah. Um, Casemiro may as well be injured. He's, he's, you know, Rashford may as well be injured. Bruno is playing on empty. So you've, you've got to say that when you when you've got your when you want to play a higher line and you you want to you want to have a left back, even those th- three things are going to make an impact on how you play. Um, and when you've had over, over sixty injuries, look, I'm not saying it's a reason to be ten hog in. That's not what we're talking about here. But I think when when Gary Neville's on national TV saying I'm not having injuries as an excuse, I think you expose yourself as a complete and utter prat, really, because it clearly is. It's an excuse for Newcastle as well. They they've got injuries. I think they've got another one at the weekend. Um, well, that's where ultimately as well. If Arsenal didn't have yeah. Rice, they'd be out of title race. Yeah. And I'd sit here and say... Well, that's no, what Don Hobby said, wasn't it? I'm not gonna, yeah, he did. And he's right. And I'm not going to say because I don't want it to happen to Arsenal. But let's say key Arsenal player, one, gets injured this week against Bayern. Yeah. I'd sit here on Thursday and say they're probably out of the title race because of that. Because I think it's so impactive. United and Newcastle have had multiple injuries. So... I don't. I don't get that. You know, I can think of three players for Arsenal that if they lost one of them, I think it would ruin their season. Um, but you've also got to go to the top of the mountain to learn that as well, isn't it? Like the yeah. season before Liverpool won it, when Van Dijk and Gomez had that partnership, and then I think Gomez got injured, or was it? And then Van Dijk got injured. Like that just completely obliterated their season. So you learn from that. The same with Arsenal, with like Declan Thomas Partey got injured last year. Now they've got Declan Rice. So I think you have to go to that to almost you know Chelsea's squad is absolutely massive but there's no sort of rhyme or reason to it at the moment no. whereas Arsenal Liverpool have been up there they know what works and they know what they need to get in that squad depth situation rather than just buying every single player on the face of the planet and, and, and most most people listening will have been up their mum's chuff when this happened but in the 90 Arsenal won the double in 97-98 the year before we won the treble and that was the year that Roy Keane did his knee Right. And um, we hung on in the title race. And I think we were playing like Nicky Butt and Paul Scholes as, ho- as the midfielders. But not having Roy Keane that year, that cost us the title. But then look Just, what happens ne- the year after. You win the treble. Roy Keane, Paul Scholes out of the final Champions League. Still won it. Nicky Butt in the middle, still wins it, got experience. So, and what, what I'm saying is injuries make a massive difference. And I thought it was just really odd from Gary Neville to be so dismissive of it. And I think it was... He's, he, I didn't listen to the commentary, but a lot of people said his commentary was really sort of anti-United at times. And I was asked a lot about it. And I said, well, look, I don't know why that was. Maybe he had a hangover. I don't know. But it, I, it felt to me like it's just because he doesn't like this oh, I think United, he's in so. a very difficult position, though, because the first thing is, as soon as he celebrates a goal or you're annoyed, he's like, ah, off, off, off camera, is like, why am I paying my sky bills for this Man United Red Devil to be on commentary? And it's the same with Carragher. Whereas I think, just chill out. Like, I could, like, I get it if a blue, like, if a Villa player on, like Lee Hendry was commentating on a Blues game, very niche. Uh, I don't really like him as a Villa player on commentary. So I get that. But I think when you, with those two, they are the su- supreme pundits for Sky. And I think just maybe just get over it a little bit. 
Yeah, as I said, I didn't listen to the commentary, but I thought the I thought the injury stuff was was farcical. Um, which I know it's on the title. People will be saying, "What's he talking about? What manager would he sack right now?" Well, with great pleasure, I can move into this. Uh, we've put it in the title as a little bit of a a lead in. Was a tease. it sack that manager now or something like that? Yeah. Uh, Pochettino, yeah, little shit. Um, I've been waiting for this. He's not little. Um, He'd be there with his tape measure. I'm six foot. How big is Pochettino actually? Well, yeah. you, well, well someone six... said we had to get a tape measure out when someone said that you were five foot eight. So yeah, well, I'll tell you what about Pochettino. You can have the sack. I stuck by him. I said Chelsea shouldn't get rid of him. It's a difficult job. But the way he behaved against Man United on Thursday night, smug git. I was so happy when they drew against Sheffield United. So they're weak considering they've had a terrible season. Um. They should have lost to Burnley with 10 men. Yeah. Should have lost to Man United. Needed the ref to help them out. Got a scammy win and celebrated like he'd come off. Uh, what annoyed, you can't. You, you what can't. annoyed me about Pochettino with that is he acted like it was on him. He was grabbing all his coaches he going was. like this. He sets was, the team out. Bollocks. He was and also, the scammiest win ever. I'll let you have it, but you can't be celebration police. If you score a last minute winner in any game, Chelsea Man United is a rivalry, maybe not an intense one. You can't be celebration police for that. I'm sorry. You're all right. Wrong. I'm not, I won't be celebration you're police. Wrong. I'll be the job police. And, and anyway amazing tactical scammy win against Man United. What did they do in the next game? Sheffield United away, one of the worst teams in the league. They even admit it themselves. 2-2 two, two draw. So sandwiched between the scammiest win against United, they've they've they basically had two crap draws against the bottom two, yeah, Burnley true. and Sheffield United. He ain't the guy. He ain't the guy. And, I, and I, I, look, look, there's a reason for this. There's a clip out there on TikTok, which I saw, which I'd forgotten, when... When in the in the in the heat of the loss, I lost it and was like, "That's really not like you." Oh, oh, oh well, I could, I, I could, I could you go and look it for yourself because I only saw it the other day, and it, I was basically to camera going, "You might have won this, but you're shit. You're absolutely shit." And actually, I'm glad you've won because you're going to keep a manager who's shit. And I was right. right. I was right because Chelsea are going to keep him, and they're crap. They're absolutely crap. They should sack him. I think he's. I think he's a bad manager. And basically, the reason I want him sacked is because they beat us on Thursday. Yeah. Well, at least and you're I, honest. And I'm just having a smug yeah. reaction to it. But no. No. On a serious note, what? I do think that you know, there's so much focus on Ten Hag. There's been hardly any on Eddie Howe, and I'd leave Eddie Howe out of this. Yeah. Please do. Pochettino, though. I. I. I would love to know what people's thoughts are on this because I, I'm. I'm struggling to see what the excuse is. They have got their starting eleven might not be very good, but the injury crisis excuse isn't there. You know they didn't buy us. Well, they bought Nicholas Jackson. That's the guy they bought. So they're not waiting for. And Enkunku, he came back. He was and the he, guy, but he, he's he's not really no, but done I, anything. I, and he I, wasn't picking him anyway. But I think ironically, Pochettino's probably taking them to a place where they weren't. But we'll see him going forward. Is like they'll be a team that's trying to challenge for that top four now because the expectation has been so has gone so low this season that next year, if they can get back into a Champions League top five space, it. I'm not saying that they will, but I think. It's just funny how the expectation will change around that. Do you not think? Because they'll, they'll be I so think, low. I think next season is basically Groundhog Day because that's and there's what no they, European football. But they didn't have it this yeah, year. True. That's what they were meant to do this year. But look, if, I, I don't know whether I don't know what their financial situation is. But if they don't go and buy a world class striker and some good defenders, I mean, and also Casido, so bad. Well, it's a dumpster fight. There was those reports coming out. I think from Sam on that's football that Todd Bowley's going to take. Well, been voted out of being chairman from 2027. So. You think you've got to wait till then? It is a dumpster fire up at, up at the top, isn't it? All yeah. the way down. They, they've tried to, but you think with Jim, what Jim Radcliffe's done, he's been so well. The, all those positions aren't in place, but been so precise in going. Start with the top, then the next one. Chelsea have just absolute scattergun approach from players, coaches, technical directors, director of football. It's just you want a bit of money, you have a go, and I, that's why I don't think you can put it all on Pochettino. Well, it was, I almost feel sorry for Chelsea fans because they were giving me so much stick on Thursday yeah, and, they were, so. and Friday yeah. and Saturday. And I was like, I don't mind because that's football. That's what it's all about. I, I think that, that is you, football. you have to take that banter. Yeah. But then I was like, in the back of my head, I was like, they won't beat Sheffield United and I'll just wait. And then, I mean, you beat Man United in that way. You look at the league and you go, we could get sixth. They, they they had to get they had two games in hand on us on Saturday night, and I think they would have been above us if they'd won both. 
what do they do against Sheffield United with all that last minute heroics, what look, whatever you call it, all the momentum of a dead cow. Yeah, well, the Burnley one's the, the worst one though, for me just because Burnley went down to 10 men and yeah. they were at home and they still couldn't get I just result. think they, they're they worse but than again, I actually expect. I thought after that United result, yeah. they would actually go on a bit of a run and they just can't do it. So it must be infuriating for Chelsea. Fans. But the thing is, at the moment, it ties into Liverpool, ties into Man United of 10 Argos, who, like the manager market's absolutely crap. Yeah, they can't go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like who, who would point. you actually have? So they're screwed anyway. They, I mean, look, I mean, they might as well go for Deserve because they've took everyone else in Brighton. Yeah, well, I, I think that's a big problem for them, isn't it? And also, where would they be without Cole Palmer? Yeah. And Con- even I mean, Conor Gallagher. They're Con- mid-table anyway. Yeah, Cole Palmer and Conor Gallagher have been. I know they spent a lot of money. Well, not to consider. Oh, I fell out with Conor Gallagher. Why? Because he pushed Kobe Mayne away there. I thought that Enzo Fernandez thing was a bit far with Mason, Mason Mount treatment. Mate, uh, yeah, I don't know what that's all about. Mason Mount came through the youth setup at, at Chelsea. One player he got the, sold, didn't he? One player of the year that, uh, when they won the Champions League. They were happy to cash in on him because of the homegrown rule. And you got Enzo Fernandez going up to him and just telling him what a real club legend's all about. He's only there because someone paid 100 million quid for him. Yeah. I Absolute. Think. Get get in the fucking bin, you mercenary. I think those uh, those uh, relationships can change. Can I just bit. say I do like Enzo Fernandez as a player, but uh, yeah, you've you, you got to do better. You can't be pointing in at the badge after one season. No, no. Especially when you've played like that. Um, Passion ju- merchant. I hate them. Just on Champions League before we get into the either ors. Big week. I mean, the, the, I could not believe the Villa game. 2 0 up, cruising at home. Mm. And then Brentford scored three in about five minutes. And Tony didn't even score one. Villa rescued a point. Spurs playing at 6pm on a Sunday, which is probably something we need to talk about in terms of goal. See that miss from Chris Wood? I know he scored one. Bloody hell. Chris Wood against the wood. Hitting the wood. Yes. I bet he wasn't hitting the wood last night. Wouldn't be happy. Does that mean hitting his own member? I don't know what I meant by that. I bet he was hitting wood, sorry. Probably just punching his own cock. Door. In frustration. Stubbing his toe. Kicking the door. Yeah. Nice. Um, terrible miss. Could yeah. be proud of the week. Um, but the Spurs nice. get another win. I, st- I still have them for fourth, but it just feels like it's going to be fifth anyway, so it's an irrelevant conversation. Yeah, I think, the, I think the race for fourth and fifth has become quite boring, really, because Man United have done nothing. There's no one else going to do anything, and I think I think fifth place will get it anyway. So really, fourth or fifth, what does it matter if you get Champions League? They both would have bit your hand off for that. It is Champions League this week, oh, though. Oh, yes. This is, now, this is when, my, when it's a, a week like this where you have some great Premier League action. You have a little Monday off, and then you get into Tuesday night, could be the most premium night of football. I'm annoyed about it though. Why? Because you, you I, bloody would be. It's so annoying because Wednesday night games are boring. PSG Barcelona. Well, when I say boring, really, you want them to split. Arsenal up. and Bayern and Man City and Real Madrid should be split up. Yeah. Because you've got to try and watch them at the same time, which I will be doing on that's football yeah. double watch along. But it's difficult. It's really you want to analyse those games. You know, you want to be watching Bellingham going up against Man City's midfield. You want to watch Kane going up against Arsenal. It's really, I'm really, I'm. Re- I know, I know. Look, you've got no right to split them. It's always look of the draw, literally. But um, it would have been nice if they'd been split. But apart from that, whew, where does it go? Well, let's start with Ars- Arsenal. Will beat Bayern, I think. You think? Mm. I mean, Arsenal. Sorry. Bayern Munich is Harry Kane's gone Title's out there. Gone, isn't it? Title's gone. I think um, not Stuttgart. I think Leverkusen can win next weekend if the results go right. The Harry Kane effect. I think Harry Kane's going to come away with no trophies this season because I can't see them winning the Champions League. No. But Thomas Tuchel, Champions League, obviously before I even got to Chelsea. But that that Chelsea season when they beat Manchester City, that's where I'd worry for Arsenal of like the league's done everything's on this Champions League now. He knows he's going at the end of the season, but if he can get another winner's medal uh, at Bayern Munich, and you look at that team, although it's in poor form... No, they've got no chance. You know? No. Even if they got past Arsenal, and I think Arsenal are so far superior, it's Real Madrid or Man City. But I think Arsenal is in the Champions League is almost a bit like Arsenal in the title race last year where that we were speaking the other day about, you know, when they had their home games against Southampton and all the nerves. Like you have to look at that Porto game. They went out to Porto and lost 1-0. Mm. That home leg wasn't very convincing either. They got through on penalties and I just think it's the case of they've not been there before and it comes it does come across a bit in the performance. Well, the Champions League is literally a different animal. If yeah. the Premier League's a horse, the Champions League... Cow? Is it cow? Yeah. Well, probably the other maybe, way around. Champions it. horse is yeah. more premium than a cow. But I, I think for Arsenal, it's either or. Um, horse or cow? It's Champions League or Premier League. And actually... Could Arsenal do the double, Mark? No. 
I don't think. I don't think so. I, I think it's very hard to do that. Good and title, I, though. We should write that down. Yeah. Could they do the double? We'll do that next week. But I think they'll beat Bayern Munich. I think they'll have too much. And I think that the Real Madrid Man City game is intriguing because you just don't know how good La Liga is compared to the Premier League, and we'll find out. Well, yeah, and, and going back, not last year, was it? Because obviously they won, but that infamous. Was it the semi-final game when they were two minutes? I've started watching the treble on Netflix and I know you're not going to watch it, the Man City documentary. No. Actually quite good. Not going to watch it. It is quite good. Just give it a little chance. I bought it for you for DVD for your birthday so you can have a little look on that. I'd rather watch my parents have a shower together. (laughs) And I'm not doing that. They're not even together anymore. That'd be even, that'd be even more traumatic if I saw them in the shower together. Imagine get, going around my dad's house and he's in, in the shower with my mum. They separated 30 years ago. I'd be like, what's going on? How long has this been going on? Anyway, <laughs> oh. anyway, no, I'm not watching it. Um, but I will be watching Real Madrid against Man City. Is that which one you're going to go for? No, I'm going to watch them both at the same time. Okay, I'm, I'm, if I was to choose, I'd definitely be going for Real Madrid. Yeah. City, just because of the Jude Bellingham Might change face. on the second leg, though, depending on the result. Yeah, uh, Man City, Real Madrid. Who do you think is going through on that one? I'd say City, but I hope Real Madrid. Yeah, I think yeah, Jude Bellingham to get a Champions League in his first season would be that would be nice, wouldn't it? I, what are the odds he gets sent off in a very you know? Well, yeah, no, yeah, he, he has got to learn about that temper. He's we got a temper streak when it comes against the referee. Well, I went out to see him in December, not him personally. Couldn't get anywhere near him um, because of the restraining order. But even in that game, it was twenty minutes in. He got a yellow card for having to go at the referee. But Mark, that's what makes him him. Mm. Uh, t- uh, let's get into some either ors actually yeah, on, because um, I don't know what we're doing well, those uh, were either ors but yeah but there, there was Ruben Diaz or Gabriel Gabriel for Arsenal which yeah. is sort of Champions League that's what I was thinking yeah. and my thought on this one Ruben Diaz or Gabriel is that when it comes down to it Diaz is a little bit like when Harlan or Hoyland get criticised because they don't have any chances and people say they're crap, but they're not getting any service. Um, it's a little bit like criticising Mo Salah because he has a bad game and then you're ignoring the fact that he's one of the best players in the world and that's because of consistency. I think Diaz is the quintessential overrated centre-back who was very, very good two years ago. And when you ask somebody who doesn't really know about football watch your Premier League team of the season, it's just traditional to go, well, it's got to be Diaz and Van Dijk. And it, and it isn't. Diaz is a good centre-back, but if you watch him for Portugal, he's not what he is for Man City. He's just a good centre-back. I don't think he's there. I don't think he's the best centre-back at City. I think John Stones is. Um, and I think this season, Gabriel, the rise has been so significant and impressive that he that he is in the conversation for an either or with Ruben Diaz now. Well, yeah, we spoke the other week about the partnership, and I think Gabriel and Saliba's a clear partnership in terms of mm. both being at that level. Man City goal scorer as well. He's a goal threat. Yeah, and I think with is uh, he the best goal threat centre back in the Premier League, Gabriel? Uh, potentially. I mean, that that's been a part of the set piece coach, mm. hasn't it? Like they've done so. All, all we were speaking about with Arsenal is they couldn't score. They haven't got a clear number nine. Well, Havertz has been banging them in for fun, and they've been scoring for set pieces. So he's definitely up there. Diaz, I think, will come again though, because we've seen it so many times with Manchester City players where they get written. John Stones was written off, mm. and he was going to sign a new contract. Nathan Aki was in that same thing. Jack Grealish has been in that. There's other players there that have probably been on and gone, but still had good seasons. So I think Diaz will come again. But yeah, Gabriel is. Definitely Definitely up there. I'd say Saliba's better than Diaz right now as well. The question was either or Gabriel or Diaz. And I would say Gabriel. I think he's a goal threat. I think he's quick. He's strong. He's a bit of a shithouse. Um, he's one of the best players in the Premier League this season. Whereas I think Diaz has sort of flatlined at a certain level where he's probably a 7 out of 10. Whereas I think Gabriel this season is an 8 out of 10. So for me, it's Gabriel. Yep, my Dreams hate- really do come true yeah and it's not so out of reach for Gabriel to be closer to Diaz because he's had a fantastic season and I hate to agree with you with your smug little face but I'm going to go for Gabriel as well Um, we've got plenty more in here do you want to get into uh, an interesting one for the Euros I love your your favourite pastime is to speak about England answer Gareth off Southgate Anthony Gordon or Jared Bowen there's going well, to be, well, this could be a battle for who goes to the Euros. We always get this as well. And what I would say is we'll have this debate, but when it comes to the 26-man squad, chill out. Madison for the World Cup. Oh, he's got to go. I don't think he played a minute and yeah, it didn't yeah. really matter. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. going to... Yeah. Don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. Just chill out. These two... They could, yeah, whoever, but Gordon or bloody... Uh, Bowen, Bowen, who's going to go? Yeah. Well, it means it's, everything. It's not really about who's going to go. It's about who's had the better season, I think. Yeah. Um, it's got to be Jared Bowen's Bowen. been magnificent for West Ham but I think Gordon's been brilliant for Newcastle as well um, 
yeah, whoever goes to the Euros, they're not going to play in some, unless something really mad happens. Um, who would I go with, Anthony Gordon or Jared Bowen? Uh, I, still, I think Jared Bowen's more of a finished article than Anthony Gordon, and Anthony Gordon's been good, but still a little bit erratic. I'm going to go Anthony Gordon, not because I want to go opposite to you. I thought about it there, and Jared Bowen is a more more of a goal scorer oh, than right. a creative. Right. Whereas I think Anthony Gordon can score your goals. But he's more of a creative as well. Who would you and rather have for United defensive now? Work rate. Gordon, yeah. No, you wouldn't. You'd we need no. We Bowen. need no. We need a creative winger. We did a podcast at the start Anthony of the Gordon season. Would be perfect for Man United. And you famously said that what were we doing? We were doing we were doing our worst eleven of the season, and you put Jared Bowen in there. And I think he had like he was seven and eight at the start of the season. So is there an agenda? No, do you I, hate the no, Dyers? No, 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 no. I do like Danny Jared, or Danny. I do like uh, Jared Bowen, but. Um, I think Anthony Gordon would be perfect for United because he's actually creative. Whereas Jared Bowen, I don't think he does get that many assists. I know. He, I think. I think when he gets an assist, it tends to be from a corner. And also, to be fair to Gordon, like when he signed for Newcastle for that fee, I just I, was, I, I, I said it was a joke. Yeah, I, uh, which for me is it's a bit like Spurs, isn't it? I said Spurs wouldn't get top eight. And if you watch a documentary, who identified him? Well, as part of many other people in that. Dan Ashworth. Dan Ashworth. Mm. So f- football is coming home. Um, no, I'd go for Bowen in that one. One I wrote down, uh, man who hit another milestone at the weekend, Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Back super, being Dutch again. Super, yeah. Uh, we've got down here Kevin De Bruyne or Frank Lampard. We haven't got this down. Will has got this down. No, Frank I think Lamp- Niall wrote this one. I actually. think this might be the poll on the Spotify poll as well. So if you do are watching on YouTube, um, we have the podcast audio on Spotify. So get over there because I think we're going to do this as a poll. Will said, it's always Lampard, Scholes or Gerrard as the best midfielder. But now De Bruyne is in the 100 club. Let's compare him to Lampard who scored a lot of goals. Who's the better player? And I said, it might work. Yeah. Because Kevin De Bruyne is going to have to go down as one of the better That's midfielders I mean. in I Premier think... League history. The problem is you're gonna you're gonna get the Chuff Brigade who are up the mum's chuff when Lampard was scoring goals. Chuff Brigade is we need yeah we've we've had ultras but Chuff Brigade. I mean I've watched it all. I've played the game. I've watched the game and Premier League. I know all of it. From I was shouting I was shouting random players out the other day. Oh Tra- yeah, we did that the other day. Didn't Trevor it? Sinclair, Julian Joachim, Tony Tony Yeboah. David Batty. Uh, David Unsworth. Kevin Pressman. Kevin Sheedy. Probably did play for Everton, actually. Um, did. George Boateng. George Weir didn't play in the Prem. He did, didn't he? He played for Chelsea. He did. Maybe. Maybe. Anyway, let's not bore people. That's a great Lampard game. or De Bruyne. I'll probably... You know what? I might just shock you and say De Bruyne. <laughs> Because Lampard is a Premier League legend and he scored a lot of goals, but De Bruyne is a better player. And I think that now he's scoring 100 club. I think I'll go De Bruyne over Lampard. I think that's going to be the minority view, but I have seen all of the Premier League era and I just think De Bruyne is better than Lampard. And I think he surpasses Lampard now. Interesting. Ooh, didn't even think I'd say those words myself. Got you, didn't I? Oh, you've got me. Caught you in my trap. He's not better than Gerard of Skulls, though. No, no. Okay. What? So you Lampard's bottom of your three in that one? Always has. I don't think we ever done that together. Yeah. And nor shall we, because it's boring and it's done to death. Um, another one down. No, we've gone through all of them down there. Uh, that's the either or section. Well done. Uh, Should we move on to Pratt of the Week? Oh yeah, I think with Pratt of the Week, it's really simple for me. Go on. Um. I just think the, yourself. The, 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 it's not me. No, not it's good. we're back where we've always been. And I pose this actually as a question and hopefully a clip. What are we going to do as football fans with the refereeing in this Premier League? It's gone beyond a point. I was doing my show on, on the radio on Saturday night and I had Wolves fans calling in in despair, not anger, in despair saying this is happening so often and it doesn't just happen to us, but it has happened a lot to us. It's happening all the time. They're not listening. They'll just carry on. It's happening every week. Last weekend was a bad week. This weekend's a bad week of officiating. Midweek with some of the penalties, the inconsistency. You know, why wasn't it a penalty for Man City? But Man United conceded a penalty. Chelsea got three that were softer than the the the, the, the Bardi Al foul on Ezzy. You saw the Wolves thing. I mean, that's just incredible to overrule that. But we are part of a dictatorship and we're, we can try and save football with this podcast. But who's listening? The PGMOL and the mainstream media, they're not listening. Football fans are the life of football 
and they're not listening. They're not changing anything. And I, I, I would pose the question, Will, what's going to change next season? I don't think it does. And I think since VAR's come in, it's got worse because it almost gives more power to these people that don't deserve more power. Yeah. Because, you know, when we... It was at the 2018 World Cup, we were waxing lyrical about VAI. It would work, but you've got the best of the best. We only send probably one delegation out to the World Cup because our refereeing system, although it should be the best, is the worst. And I think the damning indictment this year is like the Howard Webb and Michael Owen programme, not because it's a shit programme, but because it just shows more of the arrogance and like why are you doing this mm. because the only people it's benefiting is you because of what you're showcasing in there to go look we did get it right isn't that right Michael yes. and it's just I, I just think we're stuck in this world where I was quite excited when Howard Webb got appointed because out of all the officials you think he's got a bit of that Kalina in him back in the day but he's just a bald head he's just a politician Yeah, he's just a politician and it's not going to change. Like we spoke about things where you've been on certain places and, and you've had criticism come in from them to be like, rein that back in again. Who do you think you are? It's not your game. It's our game. Well, also that Howard Webb, Michael Owen show, it's scripted. I mean, no one will be surprised by that, no. but that's a scripted piece. Like they're not freestyling. Howard Webb knows what Michael Owen's going to say and Michael Owen knows what he's going to say. But I think the biggest problem that we have, and, and VAR could change overnight. And this would be, if I was CEO, I'd do this straight away. The biggest problem we have is you see a red card on a Saturday that's not given. And then on a Sunday, you see the same tackle and a red card is given. Yeah. And on Thursday, you saw that Medawaki foul from Delo, which I don't think is a penalty, but is soft. And then you, the very next Premier League game is Saturday lunchtime. You see Vardiel wrestle, wrestling Ezzy to the floor. It's worse. Yeah. It's not a penalty. And that's, fans want consistency we don't get it delivered because instead of refereeing a league across all games and going, we want a standard on what's a red, what's an offside, what's not, they referee each game individually so that although that was soft, that's worse, but it's not a penalty. Fans can't understand it, but what they're doing is they're, they're backing the referee on the pitch. So if I'm on VAR and you miss a penalty and I know it was a penalty last night, but you've not given it, when I look at VAR, I'm not thinking, well, it should be a penalty because we want to be consistent. I'm thinking, he's not giving it. I'm gonna, I want to back Will. Yeah, and that's where it's going wrong. We're individual. We're basically using VAR to back the referee on the pitch, which will lead to subjectivity, which will lead to mass inconsistency. And the most scary thing of the whole season was when Mike Dean sort of got that new role on Gillette Soccer Saturday, and he was saying like, oh, he'd look out for certain mates of his. Mm. In and uh, like, what the fuck? Like, what? In what world is that right? Just, I mean, the easiest thing, and we've said it a lot, just saving football, right? VAR should be independent to the referees. I think you it should, should be stopped. You, you should, well, I, I mean, we've said that. We've both said like, that. We, I tried to get on bloody gov.co.uk <clears throat> petitions. They turned me down. So they said it wasn't anything to do with the government. Well, get involved because, like, it's subjective. VAR was supposed to stop it being subjective. If anything, it's become even more subjective. So just have the offside, have the goal line technology, and then just referee it on the pitch because it's just... And and also as a fan experience, if we are talking about saving football, I was at that Carabao Cup final when the, the offside went in and then it's like checking a decision for an offside where it's like, hang on, I don't think they could check that. And you get no information and it ruins the match they experience. I think, and I don't know whether anyone said it, is I would have a referees association for the on-field referees and then I would have a regulatory VAR team which is completely separate like an off game yeah and there is no there is no communication yeah that, that like the referee says I think that's a goal or that's a red card VAR look at it and with their experience of what's been going on across the season they go oh look at the look at the uh, Curtis Jones red card back in October yeah that's very similar. You've got that wrong. It is a red card. That's what I'd like to see. Because when you go, look, the reason we're talking about this is the big one at the weekend was Wolves. They've scored a legitimate equaliser. The referee's given it. West Ham fan, West Fabian, no West Ham pay, player appeals that. They, they're they like, it's a goal. And then next thing in his ear, oh, you might want to have a look at this. They found something. Um, I've, I know there's some rule 115. No, that's Man City. Um, 11, rule 11 where if you're in the way of the goalkeeper and he can't see, it has to be given offside. But maybe it's the rule, but that's not what football fans want to see. The, the, but the reality is Kil, Kilman's header goes in the top corner and Fabianski is in the middle of the goal. He can't save that, Will. I know you're saying he's interfering because he's in front of him, but the keeper can't save it. 
And we should be trying to look at things and go, well, that has to be given. It's a common sense thing. If that happened to Birmingham, you would say that goal should be given. Well, I'm not getting into EFL officiating because that would be a separate podcast. <laughs> if, if it was say, in the EFL, it'd be a goal. If you say it's not what fans want to see, well, the keeper couldn't see anything anyway. He so could. He'd been blocked out. The by keeper vision. should push him out of the way. Well, then no, he'd be given a foul. Look, this is why it's a goal, right? Let's scrub out whatever Wolves player it was. Right. Fabianski won't save it. You don't know that because no, he, won't. he could he won't. change his position he when they lead it. into the cross he because he can't it. see where the ball's going to. He can't save it. He, he, he doesn't know where the ball's going to. So if you speak to speak to our mate Watto... He's, he's already messaged me. What he, he, said, he said, that's a Please goal. Keeper can't number. save it. I, I, I generally think that that one, they did get a correct. Well, it's Will who thinks the Wolves' goal was rightly chalked off. I know West Ham fans who say that was a joke. So you're in, you're in the minority here. Well, I'm just standing up for myself. As you know, I famously, I'm always off the fence and I, I'm not afraid to say how it is unless it upsets someone and, you and then I change my mind. Popular. Hey, well, I'll look after myself. Ridiculous. Anyway, I think we're all in agreement that VAR has to be Pratt of the Week. Uh, no, we've got some other ones oh, on more. here. Yeah, I've got more on here. I've got a bloody list. I've got a scroll. I've got VAR decision against Wolves. Chelsea we were putting in as well, but we've already spoken about, so we don't need to go through that. I've got a young birthday boy down here. Mark Goldbridge for writing Luton Town off again. You're on the train, you're off the train. This week you said Luton Town are down, they're done. Well, Carter well, Morris said, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Because we are staying up this season. Well, and we're we going to do it without you. All I'll say is the Goldbridge jinx has always been a thing. Yeah. The comments, the listeners will know that is a thing. The amount of times on Twitter on a Saturday afternoon I've gone, great result this is for Villa. Yeah. And then... They're 3-2 down within five minutes. So Keep the, doing that. these things happen. Um, all I'd say to Luton is, hate me if you like, but every time I write you off, you do tend to do well. So I shall, shall, shall I write them off or shall I say they've got a chance? Because if I say they've got a chance, they're going to blow it. You're doing worse than that bloody uh, Wolves defender. You're Luton hiding in front no of the goal. Luton have got no chance of staying up. Pardon? Luton have got no chance of staying up. No chance? No. You'll but, stay up now. Um, I've also got in here uh, Rory Jennings he spoke about um, I've t loosely tied this back in he went through wrestling fans this morning he said if you are interested in Wrestlemania and you were in a room you'd probably be the stupid person in that room and I said <clears throat> just enjoy yourself Rory because you like things I like wrestling is the only thing where you go you like wrestling people go why you watch that? I like Rory but you know what I think he does? I think he goes on Google and, and, and searches what's the most irritatingly provocative thing I can say. But he's, he said this for ages, though. Like that. And I, he, he, but he, he, wrote, he said Haaland's a flop. No, but in terms of wrestling, he's vehemently against it. And I say, come to a show, I'll change your mind. You know, you were in EastEnders, that's not real. Yeah, mic drop, that was it. What? You've just killed him. Why? You know, he, he doesn't like wrestling, yeah. but he, he, he took the money from EastEnders. Well, I don't think he thinks that was real. He might have thought that was real. No, he does think it was real. Oh, he really he? thought, he, he didn't even know he was being paid to act. He thought EastEnders was real. He thought Phil Mitchell was real. Yeah. And I really got, you know, at Wash and Go Shoot, I thought, hang on. When, I've, when, I've, when Tiffany died, he still goes to the grave yeah, every year. <laughs> and I thought, I've got, I've got a friend here. Well, Ard the dog. I picked him up. Don't talk about Well, Ard the dog. No, he goes. It'll, it'll well up. I, We're not well out, yeah, well yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I, I picked him up, I gave him the trophy and I thought, I've got a friend here. I'll tell you what, Jennings, let's get in a wrestling ring and see what's fucking real. Get what, you... I'll do the tombstone and you can do... I'm referee. Cena. Yeah, you can't see me. No, I'll tell you what, on wrestling, like I used to love it growing up and uh, me and Seb got the game at the weekend and he absolutely loves it. And to see that being passed on to another generation, I mean, it's entertainment. It's pure entertainment. I love the Ultimate Warrior, Brett the Hitman Hart, Shawn Michaels. I mean, some of the, they're amazing. Now, if it was real, they'd be dead. Some yeah. of the stuff they do to each other. This but, last but, but it's bloody hard what they do. This last, last l l the WrestleMania that's just happened. I've not watched it yet. The greatest no. match I've ever seen. I was emotional. Here's one for Rory. I was crying at the end of it. I've sat at home this morning. I was in tears when Cody Rhodes won because I'm that bought in to the storyline, which I know is fake, but you still have your favourites. Rory's the sort of person who probably goes and watches the Titanic and says, well, Jack, Jack and Rose never existed. Don't care about the door, whether they fit on it. It's not real. Well, it is real. You might want to look at it. There's a fucking big boat at the bottom of the ocean, Rory. Bloody idiot. Wrestling's fine. Leave him alone. Thank you. Thank you for that, mate. And I, and I was out. I'm a bit like with the Formula One. I'm out. I'm, I'm trying in, to I'm get out. you back in, aren't I? Oh, it's boring, isn't it? What? Was there a race this week? Oh, I thought, no, I'm trying to get you back to the wrestling. Um, anyway, Pratt of the Week. Jennings just nearly pushed it close, but I'm sticking with uh, VAR. I think I'd go Chelsea, I would. 
Mm, fair enough. Uh, it's time for the game. Do you want to start with your one or should I start with mine? Uh, I'll start with mine, even though I haven't uh, done it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what footballer shall I just randomly pick and give you now? I'm doing it the same, actually, because I thought I'd done um, mine on, it's not on my sheet. So uh, do you want me to start? I've got mine. Yeah, go on then. I started my career, I famous. I became famous uh, as an Englishman playing for Bayern Munich. Owen Hargreaves. Yes, correct. Well done. <laughs> First bet. I've got to try and give you something really easy now. I think the quiz is done really, isn't it? It's good. Now? It's very good. I th- um, there's a lot of guess who ones that we can do going forward, I think. I've won this anyway, really, haven't I? Let's be honest. Um, I'm a goalkeeper who is... Um, oh, <laughs> Should we just Let's spin it just off? Between, it's a it was shit. Nick Pope, yeah. We're just not putting the effort in. No. We're I, not putting I, the effort in. I thought I'd done it. I, I'm going to think of an actual good way to end the podcast because when, you know, some great moments from the guess who, you know, Angry Ginge when he said Stephen Gerrard three times or yeah, it was yeah, not yeah, an yeah, yeah. Know, Some of the best moments I think we need to history. think of three more. We're just not putting the effort in. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll sort that. I, it'll be my on my top agenda to come back next week. I'll shake your hand and say, you've won guess who. And next week, we'll be coming back with a brand new quiz. So if you've got any ideas, get involved. But- I'll tell you what I like. What? Here's a quiz I like. So you start, like, a little like what we're doing, a back, bit of back and forth then. You pick a team yeah, from nice. a certain era, and, to- and then you go back and forth. Yeah, it's nice. a bit like Mallet's Mallet. And we could get Niall to have it on the screen. Do it now then. Okay, let's go. Well, Niall would have to have the team up to know to do the squad. But let's just say... Oh, no, anyway. Let's say uh, Arsenal... No, I, don't, I can't think of a team that you're going to... Well, we'll uh, sure. I bet I'd beat you on Man United treble winners. Fuck off, we're not doing that. Oh, I'd beat you. If I lose that, I'd, I'd look a right idiot. Okay, Chelsea... I wouldn't lose it. Anyway. Chelsea, Jose Mourinho, first Premier 04, League. 05. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Robin. Terry. Duff. Cavalier. Czech. Ferreira. Um, Lampard, definitely, yeah. Essien. Um, I, think, I think Drogba was there, then. Good Johnson. Um, bum, 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 um, uh, b- 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 Bakioko? I think he'd gone to Newcastle, unfortunately, Mark. Okay. Wayne Bridge. Was he, no, was he there then? Yeah, he was there when Ranieri was there. He, we found his niche. Yeah. You're really crap at everything. I think if I could do a, <laughs> a football podcast that stopped in 2019, I think that would be... Maybe if we could just relive the come in on come in on a day like Monday, but you just tell me it's the Monday the seventh of April in two thousand and six. Well, being as I've li- I've left the fill in, we could just get Niall to have a ginger wig, and we could just nick their quiz. Yeah, or get that lad in who did a very good impression of Jamie. Yeah, <clears throat> that was good. Yeah, very good. Um, one- <laughs> <laughs> the Watto one was spot on. Uh, one last plug of the book. What can we expect? Yeah, in it? do you want book, to talk a bit more? Um, yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, we'll drop the link in the description. If you're listening on Spotify, please do go and pre-order it. It's on Amazon and uh, WH Smith. You can get a signed one. Uh, Goldbridge, uh, what is it? What's it called? Football According to Mark Goldbridge. That was a joke. Football According to Mark Goldbridge, get in. It's out in August, but you can pre-order it now. The great thing about this is loads of people have been saying all weekend, he's going to buy that. It's getting a lot of hate, but we've got a community. So if you are listening to the podcast, please do pre-order the book because if this does really well, it's just another up yours to everybody else. What's the book? all about um, I've just got a, a little chapter here I was just reading through it says it was the Qatar World Cup and I was sat at home midway through a watch along and I saw a young attractive man on a Spencer FC stream and I said I've got to get that guy his name Will Brazier and I mean that's just brilliant isn't it the sort of depth that you've gone into yeah that's that's you've, you've got the first draft uh, yeah yeah that's got to edit, edited out All but right. uh, no it's a story of my sort of life in football and this journey to this but also with some it's not just about that. It's like, you know, why you pick your football club, all the options there, why we're so obsessed with transfers, international football, etc. So, and, and, and obviously there's a few analogies in there as always. So please do order the book. Good shout out, Will. And also make sure you're getting your comments in below, uh, below and support the podcast um, and give us five stars on Spotify and all that jazz and tell your friends. That's how we want it to go. Can I throw you under the bus as well, just quickly as well? I think one thing I'd like to do is uh, just, because you might be doing some other stuff, but just maybe a one-off podcast live show. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. So if you'd like to do that, get involved in the comments because I need to make this happen. Even if we do it locally. It just, could, you can buy the book and then bring it to the show and I'll do a signing. But just like a podcast, love, not, not tied in with anything else, just a little evening of the podcast. Yeah, nice intimate venue. Nice intimate venue. No no knobheads. Yeah. Uh, and we'll just have a little laugh and we'll do it locally to the I've seen area. Orcott do that in a pub. Yeah, I think just... Probably hasn't got that many people who turn up. So uh, just, steady, uh, yeah. Hey, oh, that, was you. That, that was what you said off the camera. <laughs> Olcott, I'm with you. I reckon you could do bigger than 20. I think you could go 40, you're, 50. You were a little shit back you. I did not say that off camera. Although this is why I get slagged off in the industry, though. Who? Because people think I'm being re real. I would cut it out. Um, no, but, keep it in. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's banter it's good banter people I, like it I think a nice little venue like that And uh, but if you've got to let us know in the Spotify comments or on YouTube if you've got this far you must bloody like the podcast so let just us know. buy the book and tell us whether you want to come to a live yeah. show yeah um, legends right you get off now because you've got a little birthday surprise that we've organised uh, not going to say what her name is but you'll be meeting her later on so what a lovely surprise that is um, does she what 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 we're we gonna do? Just go for a go for a nice romantic walk and then down the rapids at Centre Park. It better be Mrs Goldbridge. I can't confirm or deny. Well, if it's not, there's going to be trouble, and I'll be in there. I'll see you later. Thanks, everyone. Speak to you soon.